Are you addicted to social media? What are some signs that you might be? Social media isn't real. Use it in an addictive fashion because that maximizes the profit that can be extracted from your attention and data. We know, the science is clear, we know that people who spend more time on Facebook suffer higher rates of depression than people who spend less time on Facebook. Your social media addiction. addiction. I was born in the prime era of social media. My first experience of social media would have been Microsoft Messenger, or MSN for short. I'd spend all day with friends at school, give them my email address, run home from school when it was finished, hop onto my computer and talk to them like I haven't seen them in months. Conversations would sort of go like this. Hi. Hi. What are you up to? Nothing much. You? Nothing much. Cool. And that was my beginning experience of social media. Fast forward a few years, and in 2008, I discovered the social media network, known as Facebook. Now Facebook is somewhere where you can add friends, write status updates, share photos, tell people where you are, what you have bought, who you're dating, what you're watching, your political views, your health updates, your family issues. Facebook is where you make your private life public and people such as myself are addicted but as time went on social media sites started popping up such as twitter a place where you can make your thoughts public and see whether or not people agree with them instagram a place where you can post photos of your starbucks cup or your favorite vegan restaurant and then came along snapchat another social media where you can post 10 second videos of what you're currently doing in your life which can be sent to just a single person or every person in your friends list but with all these social media sites popping up, more and more people started going on them. It was always the battle to have the most, whether it be the most likes, the most followers, the most subscribers, the most retweets, the most comments. And what does that give you? That little bit of happiness? That sense of power? That hit of dopamine? That's what it is. When you see that little notification pop up, or you see that new subscriber pop up, you get that good feeling, like you've just won something and people love it and people are addicted to it but what if social media was to just suddenly disappear just like that what would people do would people care if what shoes you'd bought or would you lose that reassurance from strangers now i've seen the person who inspired me to do this video do it for 30 days and that guy was matt diavella if you don't know who he is check him out in the description down below he makes these amazing videos and he puts himself through a lot of challenges that normally lasts around a month. See, the thing is, I would do it for a month, but I don't have the time or even the willpower to do it. And to be honest, one week was long enough for me. <laughs> so last week I said goodbye to all the social media apps on my phone, apart from WhatsApp, mainly due to family reasoning. And I started this journey of no social media. And here's how it went down. Monday was weird. I woke up to my normal alarm, but no notifications. I went straight to my phone to check the social media folder, but there was no social media apps in there. My journey to work that morning was also difficult. I kept finding myself checking that same folder constantly, even though I had no notifications. It was only till I arrived at work I realised how bad it was. I counted at least over 80 times at work alone I went to check my phone. But why was I checking even though I had no notifications? Well that's easy. Natural reactions. My body became so used to checking social media apps on my phone that it became a second nature to me and I wouldn't even realise I was doing it. I kept getting frustrated every time I checked because I knew I was setting myself up for disappointment. As days went on it started to become more easier. Yes, I was still checking my phone for social media but I was trying to find new reasons to go on my phone such as to play games like Uno. Further down the week I wasn't even going near the social media apps folder. I just kind of forgot about it. One thing I do want to bring up is that I was starting to become more aware of the amount of time that I had. I started to become more creative in work that I was doing on my laptop. I even started up a new hobby as well, such as creating these alternative album artworks. I'll put up a few on this screen at the bottom, but the thing is with that I had no one to show it to. It was just kind of, hey, I did these album arts but only I can see them. That kind of sucked because in a way I wanted that reassurance. I wanted to hear people's opinions on them. That was the sort of stuff I was missing. As it was edging closer to the end of the week, I was getting more and more excited to be able to go back onto my phone again. The main reason being so I could share the work that I'd created over this week of 
with no social media. But over this past week, I did gain a lot of positives of not using social media. I was going out more, I was being more creative, I was able to take care of myself and my well-being. I was even able to go gym again. I started running and started doing weights and stuff and that was something I hadn't really done for such a long time and because I had this spare time, I was able to do it again. Not going on social media made me realise how much time I really have. I was originally clocking in at 6 plus hours a day on my phone, but during the challenge I was doing it under 2 hours. Not going on social media gave me that freedom from the screen in my hand, and honestly it just felt so refreshing. But now I'm back on scrolling again, watching video compilations and finding pictures of funny dogs. Will I want to do this again? Of course I will. Do I recommend you do this? Of course I do. Just take a week break from your phone to truly see how much time you really have.